first I want to thank you guys for listening in on my presentation. Um, I'm going to be talking about an article I found titled Comparative Study of Conventional and Topical Heparin Treatments for Burn Analgesia. Um, but first before we do that, I'm going to talk to you guys on what exactly is a burn um, and some background information on the different classifications of burns. So a burn is an injury to a person's cells resulting in tissue death. Burns can be caused by a few things like heat, friction, electricity, radiation, and chemicals. There are three classifications of burns. These include first degree burn, also called superficial burns, second degree burns, also called partial thickness burns, and third degree burns, also called deep thickness burns. First degree burns are the least severe out of the three burns. The burn is superficial and the affects only the outer layer of the skin. There are a few indicators that show you may be suffering from a first degree burn. These indicators include redness of the skin, minor swelling, pain, and skin that is dry and peeling. Treatment for a first degree burn can typically be done at home using over-the-counter products. To help treatment, you should soak the wound in cool water for at least five minutes, use ibuprofen for pain, use aloe vera or other lotion to help soothe and hydrate the skin, and use an antibiotic ointment to protect the burn. First degree burns should typically heal within three to six days. Second degree burns are more severe than first degree burns, but not quite as severe as third degree burns. Second degree burns are deeper into the skin and results in blisters. Just like first degree burns, the skin will become red and sore. Because the burn is deeper, bandaging is used to prevent infection and to help speed up recovery. To help heal the burns, run the skin under cool water for at least 15 minutes, take over-the-counter medication for pain, and use antibiotic cream for the blisters. If the blisters are very severe, then a skin graft may be used to heal the burn. A skin graft basically takes skin from a different part of the body and replaces the damaged burned skin. Healing takes about three weeks depending, but depending on how bad the blisters are, recovery time may be longer. The last classification of burns is third degree burns, which is the worst of the three. These burns affect all layers of the skin and can damage the bloodstream, bones, and organs. Although these burns look the most painful, a lot of the time the patients don't feel the pain because nerve damage is so severe. Skin can have a few different appearances when suffering from a third degree burn, which include white and waxy, charred, dark brown, or even raised and leathery looking. Because of the depth of the burns, treatment needs to be handled at emergency care centers and never on your own. Alright, so now I'm going to talk to you guys about the article that I found. The objective of the article is to compare pain with the use of conventional treatments to the use of topical heparin treatment on victims of second and third degree burns. The sample of this study was 58 participants with a mix of both male and female patients. These patients were between the ages of 18 and 55. The patients chosen for the study suffered from second degree burns covering 10 to 30 percent of their body, with third degree burns suffering from less than 10 percent of their body. All patients involved in the study were involved in a fire within the last 48 hours of their treatment. The method of the study was to randomly select all patients into one of two groups. The first group was a conventional treatment, which included balneotherapy and silver sulfadiazine dressing. Balneotherapy is basically therapeutic treatment by bathing the wound. Silver sulfadiazine is an antibiotic that prevents the growth of infection. Treatment for this group was based on the facility's methods based on authorized protocol. The second group was called the TH group, in which topical heparin was given to the patients three times daily. Heparin is a blood thinner, so it prevents blood clots. Theory behind this idea is that if blood can't clot, then more blood will reach the burnt tissue to increase the healing process. The wound wasn't 
recovered until crust on the skin showed and also didn't receive balneotherapy. However, cleaning of the wound was used to prevent infection. Analgestics, which are painkillers, were used to help all the burn victims involved in the study to help with their amount of pain. Analgestics were given to the conventional group prior to each of their wound treatments and were given to the topical heparin group based on the patient's demand. Pain was measured in the patients for 21 days using a VAS pain scale in the morning, after bed hygiene, at night, and immediately before given their painkillers. This clinical study showed that the topical heparin group required less analgesic medication because patients started feeling relief from their pain at a faster rate than the conventional group. Not only did the group feel less pain, they reported less fevers throughout the treatment. It's no surprise, however, that this group did report an increase of bleeding, but that's because, like previously mentioned, heparin is a blood thinner, so it prevents the blood from clotting. The topical heparin group also showed a greater quality of restored skin than the conventional treatment group. This chart here shows the average BAS of both groups for each day. This chart shows a significant decrease in pain throughout the treatment for the heparin group. When compared side by side, it also shows how much more of an impact heparin had on pain compared to the conventional treatments. Burns have a huge relevance when it comes to physical therapy. Burns can play a big impact on a patient's treatment and recovery. If a patient is feeling pain from their burn, then they can't participate in the day's treatment. Range of motion, strength, flexibility, and all-around well-being can be compromised when working with a burn victim. We also need to consider the open wound. We need to be careful not to spread infection into anything that may affect the healing process of the wound. Overall, I found this to be an interesting study. Though I found it interesting, I feel it did lack a lot of details. There needs to be more information on the details of the conventional group and their treatments. Also, the study only measured pain, but according to the results, it showed that the quality of the restored skin was higher on the topical heparin group. I feel there should have been some measurements of the size of the wound. I also feel like the pain scale needed more details. It lacked to mention the range of the pain scale. Like I said though, overall I thought this was a pretty interesting study and the results really did shock me. I really want to thank you guys for your time and listening in on my presentation. Um, if you have any questions, just please let me know. Thank you.